Bill says. Um, I'm uh, very uh, proud to stand here today once again in support of Bill C-18, uh, an act to amend the uh, uh, Rouge National Urban Park uh, Act, uh, Canada National Parks Act, Parks Canada Agency Act, and the Rouge National Urban Park Act. Um, I want to, uh, to thank my colleagues for their interventions uh, uh, this, uh, this afternoon and, and certainly uh, in the previous uh, occasions at the House, uh, as well as the hard work of the committee that's brought uh, this uh, forward to us uh, in sh such a short period of time. Um, I, I will focus my, uh, my uh, discussion today primarily on the uh, Rouge National Urban Park. Uh, as it is uh, very relevant to the riding that I represent, uh, the riding of Scarborough Rouge Park. So for obvious reasons, I will uh, limit my, my, uh, my intervention to uh, the, um, uh, the, the Rouge Park. Um, Parks, um, Parks Canada has uh, had decades of experience in applying ecological integrity in a variety of protected areas, each with its un own unique needs and set of circumstances. In considering the addition of ecological integri integrity to the Rouge National Urban Park, I'm confident that Parks Canada can and will bring the experience to bear in the Rouge while re respecting the park's urban setting and its reasons for establishment. Allow me to begin by quoting the amendment proposed for Section 2 of the Rouge National Urban Park Act. Ecological integrity means, with respect to the park, a condition that is determined to be characteristic of its na natural region and likely to persist, including abiotic components and the composition and abundance of native species and biological communities, rates of change and supporting processes. As this definition makes clear, ecological integrity involves a holistic and comprehensive view. By viewing ecological integrity as a continuum and adopting a similar approach as that taken by its partners in the Greater Toronto Area, Parks Canada will be able to apply ecological integrity across the park's diverse landscapes to achieve the best ecological outcomes possible, while at the same time ensuring an integrated approach to the conservation of nature, culture, and agriculture. Essentially, Bill C-18 would require Parks Canada to manage Rouge National Urban Park in a way that appropriately considers living things, the urban park's flora and fauna, along with the inanimate things like land and water. In addition, its management will also have to consider the dynamics of ecosystems, how they change, and what drives their evolution. Placing the first priority on ecological integrity in this way is not new, of course. Parks Canada is already required by law to place the first priority on ecological integrity, the management of traditional national parks. Rouge National Urban Park, however, represents an entirely new concept for Canada to create, protect, and present natural, cultural, and agricultural heritage in a park that lies next to Canada's largest city and metropolitan area. Incidentally, the park is accessible to um, 7 million people within a one-hour driving distance. Um, and as, as indicated by our minister, it's also accessible by public transport. Rouge National Urban Park represents a bold step forward for Canada. To get a better sense of this, one need only look back at the history of protected areas in this country. In 1885, the Government of Canada demonstrated great vision by creating and protecting our country's first national park, today known as Banff National Park. The decision to create one of the world's first national parks was a bold and progressive move by a young country. The idea that elements of our nat natural and cultural heritage are inherently valuable and worthy of protection for future generations remains just as powerful today, especially as we celebrate our 150th birthday. Just as significant, however, was Canada's decision to make national parks accessible for all Canadians and not just a privileged few. This policy remains relevant today, albeit challenging because of the inherent challenge in preserving elements of a d dynamic ecosystem while making those elements accessible to visitors. In 1911, Canada created an organization originally known as the Dominion Parks Branch, now the Parks Agency of Canada, to handle this work and to develop the expertise needed to do it well. Over the years, Canada created more national parks and developed 
world-leading expertise in how to plan, manage, and program them. Today, Parks Canada actively promotes wildlife in places that attract hundreds of thousands of visitors each year. This work requires innovation, scientific research, and a great deal of field work. It also requires making tough decisions, managing the relationships between species, and deciding when to intervene and when not to intervene in balance. It's a balancing act. Another important milestone that informs the creation and management of Rouge National Urban Park was the establishment of the National Historic Sites Program more than a century ago. With this program, Canada began to protect and, and present elements of our history. At the time, it was also seen as a bold step forward. Today, Parks Canada manages 171 national historic sites, such as former forts, towns, and fur trading posts. By preserving and presenting elements of our history, Parks Canada helps Canadians and visitors to this country appreciate our rich and unique heritage. Canada's decision to establish a national marine conservation areas in 1987 further enabled the protection and promotion of Canada's natural and cultural heritage and was another bold decision that demonstrated international conservation vision and leadership. Over time, ecological values have increasingly merged with heritage values. This is particularly true with Rouge National Urban Park, a place that includes some of the oldest indigenous sites in Canada, along with first-class agricultural land that has been farmed continuously for centuries. It is also home to rare Carolinian forest, wetlands and meadows that provide habitat to over 1,700 species of plants and animals, some of them at risk of extinction. With each new milestone, Parks Canada has taken on greater responsibility and acquired new levels of expertise and experience. It was forged valuable partnerships with external organizations, including indigenous partners, community groups, volunteers, and local residents. One of the strongest examples of successful partnership is the Guayanas National Marine Conservation Area Reserve and Haida Heritage Site, located on the very edge of the Pacific Continental Shelf on Canada's west coast, the lands and waters, the Guayanas have long been celebrated for their stunning beauty and remarkable biodiversity. From its temperate rainforest to the surrounding marine waters, the archipelago is a place of great cultural and ecological significance and a sacred place where the land, sea, and people have always been inseparable. In 2010, the Guayanas became the first site in the world protected from mountain summit to deep ocean floor. The Archipelago Management Board, with representatives of the Council of the Haida Nation and the Government of Canada, managed the site cooperatively. With Guayanas was, when Guayanas was established, Guajav, president of the Haida Nation, described it this way, and I quote, this is a changing of the tides. As we come to appreciate the fragile and precious nature of our marine areas, we will begin to give the necessary attention to look after and restore our oceans. Mr. Madam Speaker, uh, the historical context I have described is crucial in making a reasoned uh, decision about Bill C-18. The management of national parks, national historic sites, and national marine conservation areas continue to evolve, and yet a management approach based on ecological integrity continues to be in the best interest of Canadians and our collective heritage. Parks Canada is a world leader in applying this approach. A few years ago, the World Wildlife Fund uh, International awarded Parks Canada a gift to the earth, the organization's top accolade for conservation work of outstanding global merit. The award recognizes inspiring leadership and conservation achievement that contributes to protecting the living planet. Bill C-18 would give Parks Canada the authority to follow the same management approach that it uses in traditional national parks in Rouge National Urban Park to make them accessible and memorable for visitors while protecting their integrity. Management decisions making, decision making will take ecological integrity as the first priority while also considering the reason for the park's establishment. The authority is granted under the Act in support for the park's objectives. To describe it another way, ecological integrity is the goal of Parks Canada. Managing visitor experience, educational programming, and ecosystems is a process used to get there. Canada remains at the forefront of efforts 
to conserve elements of its heritage, flora, fauna, and landscapes, placing the first priority on ecological integrity in the management of the Rouge National Urban Park will ensure that this country furthers its international leadership in conservation. Working in collaboration with environmental groups, farmers, indigenous people, and other stakeholders, I'm confident that Parks Canada will work to achieve ecological gains and conserve cultural and agricultural resources throughout the park. Madam Speaker, I want to take a few minutes to really thank and acknowledge the number of different people and individuals and organizations that have really helped us to get to this point today. And I want to really um, start with, um, uh, with the, the many levels of government and leaders from different um, uh, governments for, for, their, uh, for their great work, including our Minister of Environment and Climate Change, as well as the provincial uh, ministers uh, who have been involved in this, including uh, the Honorable Brad Duguid. I want to start um, by also acknowledging Lois James, who is long considered to be the mother of the Rouge, who uh, for over 50 years uh, has worked to advocate for, for this vision. Uh, and uh, in 2003, she was acknowledged with the um, uh, Order of Canada for her great service uh, to this country. Um, the Rouge remains a life work of many different individuals, and I'll be remiss if I don't acknowledge the work of the Friends of the Rouge, who were mentioned uh, earlier by my colleagues, uh, including Jim Robb, Kevin O'Connor, and Gloria Resner, for their continued advocacy on this, including uh, advocacy as, as late as an, half an hour ago. So I, I do uh, really appreciate the, their interventions and their continuous work on this. Um, certainly, C. Paws and, and Janice Sumner, uh, who's taken great leadership in, in bringing this together along with her other environmental colleagues, uh, I think it's quite important uh, for, for, uh, for them to get together and be part of, uh, of coming up with the, the amendment, um, as well as the farmers who uh, for uh, many for, uh, for over 200 years have farmed uh, the areas. There are a number of family farms uh, that, have, uh, th that have existed um, in the area for, uh, for, for over two centuries, and, and really they've, uh, they've played a very important role in, in coming to the table and coming to, um, to, uh, to c consensus on, on Bill C-18. Um, many local organizations have, uh, have, a, have a vested stake in this, including um, the West Rouge Community Organization, the Centennial Community and Recreational um, Association, and the Highland Creek Community Association, uh, who are all part uh, of uh, my riding, but also who have been uh, impacted by the, the Rouge Park. Um, there are a number of other organizations that precede me, including Save the Rouge Coalition that uh, I, I think 30 years ago basically set up and, and, and uh, started their great work in, in achieving this, uh, this dream. Um, I know my honorable friend, uh, just the, the previous speaker, spoke uh, about how uh, he can get a little park in his community of Hamilton into a national park uh, by a tick mark, and, and unfortunately it's not that simple. It is because all of these people have worked so hard under tremendous odds uh, to get to this point. I mean, just to put it in perspective, the land we're talking about in terms of the, the provincial land alone is about uh, um, 25 squ square kilometers. Uh, once completed, the entire park is about 79 square kilometers. The cost of a bungalow in parts of this riding are in excess of a million dollars. So if you look at the, 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 the enormous pushback from developers and from, from other uh, interested parties in, in, in stopping this over the last uh, three decades was immense and these people withstood it. So I'm, I'm really gratified um, uh, and humbled by the, by the great work that they've done uh, over this time. Of course, my, my good friend and, and colleague, uh, uh, the member for Scarborough Guildwood, um, who uh, uh, used to represent parts uh, of the park, uh, but who's a, who's a great advocate on this. Um, I, I really wish to acknowledge him. And our Minister of Environment and Climate Change once again, and her team who have worked so hard in such a short period of time to make sure that this becomes a Canada 150 gift for the mm. people of Scarborough and for the people of Toronto and for the people of Canada. So I want to really thank her and her team for this enormous work. Finally, to all my colleagues here who who, who uh, have spoken and who continue to, um, to, to, uh, to express concerns, but also express support uh, for this. I want to thank you. This, is, um, this really uh, should be a cross-party line uh, issue where uh, you know, we are creating 
um, uh, we, we are solidifying a vision uh, of the community that's come together for the last you know, 30, 40 years uh, in a way that we're preserving for future generations. And I think we will look back on it in, 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 in a number of years with great pride to see what a great Canada 150 gift we've given to our country. With that, Madam Speaker, I want to acknowledge uh, the, the, that we are on the traditional lands of the Algonquin people uh, and to thank you and, and, and all my colleagues for, for their efforts this afternoon. Thank you. Questions and comments, questions et commentaires, the honourable member for Sarnia Lambton. Thank you, Madam Speaker, and I'd like to thank the member opposite for his speech. It, it must be great to have such a wonderful park in his riding. And uh, I wanted to clarify uh, my understanding for the member of, of um, Hamilton. I don't think, like, the park is already open, is my understanding. So it's, we're not talking about a delay in the project. We're talking about the final transfer of a parcel of land from the Wynn Liberals for the low, low price of $100 million. But on the subject of ecological integrity, I just want to have the government be on record on two points that I'm concerned about. You know, ecological integrity sounds like a planet-friendly word, but my understanding is that if fire or flood would break out in the park, that the government will intervene, which is not what, what's typically understood in ecological integrity, and also that farmers will continue to be able to farm as they are farming now, which is not also guaranteed by that term. So I just would love to have the government put that on record. Thank you. The Honourable Member for Scarborough Rouge Park. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker, and I'd like to thank my friend uh, for her intervention. Um, with respect to uh, the issue of um, ecological integrity, it is front and center, um, and, and I, and I, I re-emphasize it in my speech. Um, all national parks in Canada have, uh, the Parks Canada has a mandate to ensure uh, ecological inter integrity as, uh, as front and center of its uh, management plan. Um, this is no, uh, there's no difference here. Uh, the only difference is that there, you know, we are talking about an area that is somewhat developed um, around. Uh, you know, I, I live very close to the, to the park. I know um, there's a hospital, there's a highway going through it, there are uh, railway lines, there's a number of different uh, um, uh, communities that, that surround it. Um, and it's very, very similar, I think, in, in, to, to Banff National Park, where you know, there is a, an, an element of, of uh, uh, development there. Uh, what is important is that you know, when we look at the future, environmental um, uh, ecological integrity is front and center, uh, which means that, yes, if there is a fire, they will have to, you know, we will have to send a, a fire department to put out the fire, as your colleague uh, from Barry Innisfil uh, said earlier. Uh, those are things that, that are part of the reality of, uh, of the area that we're talking about. We're talking about one of the, you know, from a real estate dollar perspective, is one of the highest, um, you know, areas in the country. Uh, so it, it will definitely do those things, but at the same time, uh, have ecological integrity as front and center. Questions and comments? Questions and commentaires, l'honorable député de Jonquière. The honorable member for Jonquière. Well, thank you very much, Madam Speaker, and I thank the honorable member for his speech. I have the Fjord du Saguenay National Park in my riding. It's kilometers and kilometers of that enable us to see the fjord, the area, uh, winter sports are practiced there, summer sports, etc. So that's uh, very important. And they have, in fact, uh, applied for UNESCO recognition. And that will bring in a considerable uh, influx of tourists uh, to the area with a, a designation. So I hope we'll get some good news on that for that recognition. My question to the member opposite is will they honor their commitment? Now we're talking about the Rouge National Park, but it's also important for the ecology, for the forest, for the wetlands, to have very strict and concrete measures in place to protect them. Spark? Um, I, th I thank my friend for that question and, and certainly uh, congratulate her, her on, on, uh, on, on hopefully achieving the UNESCO designation um, as a World uh, Heritage Site. Uh, but with respect to the Rouge, I mean, it's, it's pretty clear uh, that ecological integrity is essential, uh, and that's what this bill envisions, and this is a commitment that we made, and it's a commitment that we're delivering on, Madam Speaker. Comments, questions, and commentaires. The Honourable Member for, Scarborough, uh, for uh, Peace River, West Lock. <laughs> that's it, Madam Speaker. Thank you so much. 
Hi. Uh, oh, this I, I really do appreciate this bill because it gives me uh, another opportunity to speak about my riding, and as I like to call it, the promised land. And so I was just wondering, uh, from the honourable member, uh, seeing as he seems to have quite a, had quite a hand in, in drafting this bill, I was just wondering on the process of how, what they went through in order to develop the taking the little piece out of the national park up in northern Alberta and, and handing it over to the, the fir local First Nation. I'm just wondering if you can outline a little bit of the process that went into that. Thank you, Madam Speaker. The Honourable Member for Scarborough Rouge Park. I'd like to thank my friend uh, for those uh, comments and, and question. Uh, certainly, uh, promised land is, uh, uh, goes way beyond just northern Alberta. I think it goes uh, from coast to coast to coast in the country that we live in. Uh, but certainly, we have uh, uh, more promised lands in, in our writings, uh, perhaps, than others. Um, in terms of, uh, you know, my advocacy uh, has been limited to the Rouge Park and, and admittedly because of of the area I represent and, and, and my particular uh, interest in, in, in ensuring that this becomes a Canada 150 uh, outcome for us. Um, with respect to um, the amendments to, that will affect uh, my friend's riding in Peace River Westlaw, uh, it, it really is, a, is, a, is an issue of, uh, of uh, reconciliation is to ensure that uh, we transfer over lands um, that uh, will um, enhance uh, the First Nations community uh, in his riding and, and, and certainly to, to, to support uh, the overall process of, of doing justice by our Indigenous peoples. Then comments, questions et commentaires, the Honourable Parliamentary Secretary of the Government House Leader. Yes, uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. And if I may, just to, to commend the member from uh, Scarborough Rouge Park, uh, for the fantastic work that he has been in terms of that advocate. Uh, I couldn't help but notice whether it was in uh, second reading, uh, committee stage, uh, third reading, uh, the member's engagement on this particular piece of legislation. It's quite obvious uh, that it, he's very passionate about not only the bill, but more specifically the park itself. So uh, I just wanted to congratulate him on, on doing such a fantastic job in being a strong advocate. And uh, when, I, when I think of uh, our national parks, I made reference to it uh, earlier, there is a great sense of pride in our national parks and historical sites. Uh, and maybe if I could just ask the member if he could provide some thoughts uh, in terms of how it is that uh, uh, our parks and historical sites is a, a, a part of our heritage. And we should go out and promote and encourage uh, our, the public to, to get engaged in, the, in our parks. Whether it's an urban park, rural park, all parks are good parks. The Honourable Member for Scarborough Rouge Park. Um, thank you, um, uh, Madam Speaker, and thank my friend for those kind words and those comments. Um, I mean, the Rouge Park is very personal to the people who live uh, in the community, who live uh, around the park, and to the people uh, uh, of Scarborough. Uh, many of us have spent uh, our great uh, moments there. We've, uh, you know, m my daughters, for example, have planted trees. Um, they've, uh, you know, uh, last fall uh, during Thanksgiving, we were out for a hike. I know my, my friend from Guildwood said the same thing about his family during Thanksgiving. And so it's a very personal thing. It's not something, you know, uh, some many, many people can't say we had a role in, in shaping our national park uh, uh, or a national park. And I think a lot of kids who live uh, in, in my riding but also around Scarborough can, can say that. So it's very personal. And, and I think that maybe uh, that impact may be coming out in the way we're presenting uh, the, the need for this, uh, this legislation. Uh, but uh, it does really um, uh, animate the, um, the, the great deal of pride in all of us, uh, because uh, not just as a representative of Scarborough Rouge Park, but all of us as colleagues here who are looking at Canada's 150 and saying, what a gift to Canada that we can give on its 150th birthday. Comments, questions, and contacts. We have time for a brief question. The Honourable Member for Peace River Westlock. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Speaker, and, and once again, I'd like to uh, thank the interventions of the, my colleague from uh, Rouge Park. Um, him and I have uh, met on in several occasions. We sit on committee together, but then we also seem to run into each other at events. Uh, so we seem to have a lot of similar interests around the world, and it's just interesting that we both end up on a, sa a similar bill parts of our ridings, even though we're a vast 3,000 kilometers between our ridings, uh, we, we tend to, we seem to be on the same thing more often. So my, my question to the, the Honourable Colleague is, is um, how come this little piece of the bill never ended up in the name of the bill? Thank you. The Honourable Member for Scarborough Rouge Park, a very brief uh, uh, answer, please. Um, 
I, I th thank my friend for that, and yes, we do uh, end up spending a lot of time together on, on our committee work. Um, look, what's important is the content of the bill, and the content of the bill in C-18 covers a range of issues, including uh, what's relevant in my writing, which is, uh, you know, to ensure ecological integrity and, and um, uh, amendments to the Rouge National Park Act, um, as well as important initiatives that will ensure that we're towards a path of reconciliation in, in my friend's writing of Peace River West Law. And I think that's what's important. I don't think titles are essential. I think what's important is the outcome, and I think we have the desired outcome that's, uh, that we want. Uh, and as Canadians and as parliamentarians, uh, sitting on this 150th birthday year, this is a great way to celebrate our progress.